In this lecture video, we're going to talk about limiting reactants. Um, there's a lot of ways to create analogies around limiting reactants. Uh, everything, usually around recipes, everything from like, if you have a package of hot dogs and a package of buns, what is your limiting reactant? Like, how many hot dogs can you make? And if you have within that package of hot dogs, 10 hot dogs, but your buns, you only have eight buns, the most complete hot dogs in buns you can make are eight, right? You're limited by the number of buns you have. You have the least of those for your ingredients to make our product hot dogs in bun. <laughs> um, and that's really what limiting reactant is. It's just trying to determine which of your reactants you have the least amount of in terms of the ratio that you need them to react in. So it's like, what is the piece of the recipe that you have in your kitchen or your lab that prevents you from making more of your products? Uh, and so one way to look at this is through an example. So we've got methane and oxygen combusting into carbon dioxide and water. And in a reaction like this, I need two moles of oxygen to react with every one mole of methane. I have a one to two mole ratio between methane and oxygen. So with that in mind, if I have one mole of methane and one mole of oxygen gas that I'm combining, which reactant will I use all of? And which one will be left over? Well, if for every one mole of CH4, two moles of oxygen react, then by the time half of a mole of methane reacts, I'll have reacted one mole of oxygen. And then I'm out of oxygen. Like, there isn't any more. So I've used all of my oxygen and I still have half of a mole of methane remaining. So I have an excess of methane. And so that means that really oxygen here is our limiting reactant. That means if I want to predict the amount of carbon dioxide or the amount of water that I have in the products when I recombine this mole of methane and this mole of oxygen, then I am going to predict those amounts based on the amount of oxygen I have. If I predicted it off the one mole of methane I have, I would predict that I would make way more carbon dioxide and water than I actually will. So our limiting reactant becomes the chemical that we base all of our predictions off of because it is our, like the, the amount that dictates how much we can make. When it runs out, the reaction stops. So when we do limiting reactant problems, we're really going to be doing a stoichiometry problem two ways, trying to predict if our which reactant is the limiting reactant, which will produce the least amount. And there are a couple of different, essentially, algorithms for solving this type of problem. And I know I was taught one way that is probably, like after, after teaching for a while, I realized it was kind of a really obtuse way of doing it. So I'm gonna show you a way that is simple, but a little bit longer. So as long as you are confident in your stoichiometry calculation skills, you're basically gonna treat this like two stoichiometry problems, and then you'll compare at the end. And if this doesn't quite work for you, let me know, and I can give you some other ways of uh, thinking about approaching this problem to get the same answer. So in this case, we're going to combine two grams of propane with two grams of oxygen, and we wanna know how much carbon dioxide will be produced. So the, the red flag that this is a limiting reactant problem is that I'm given two masses for my reactants, and I'm asked about a product. And so to be able to predict the amount of product, I have to choose which reactant I'm making that prediction from. And that's where the limiting reactant piece comes in. So one way to do this is to just assume the propane is the limiting reactant and predict the amount of carbon dioxide that forms. And then assume oxygen is the limiting reactant and predict the amount of carbon dioxide that forms. And then compare those numbers. The smallest one will have been produced by the limiting reactant. So let's start with our propane. I have two grams of my C3H8, and I'm going to convert that into moles of propane, convert the moles of propane into carbon dioxide, and then convert that to the mass of carbon dioxide. I can stop and compare at the moles of carbon dioxide too if I want, um, or I can take this all the way to mass. So my uh, propane molar mass is going to be 40. Sorry, 44.097 grams per mole. 
My molar mass of oxygen is going to be 31.998 grams per mole. And my molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams per mole. Okay, so with that, I have conversion factors and I have my mole co my coefficients for uh, my balanced equation so I can build mole ratio conversions as well. So I have two grams of my propane. So I'll convert that into moles first. So I have 44.097 grams in every one mole of my propane. Then I have uh, my mole ratio with oxygen. So I want to get, I, I want to be in moles of oxygen. So I need to, to cancel out moles of propane. So I'm going to put that on the bottom. So it cancels out with the one on the top. And moles of, uh, moles of CO2, sorry, on the top, because that's what I want to know the mass of at the end of the day. And then I'll multiply by the molar mass of carbon dioxide so that way I can convert from moles into mass. So that's going to be times 44.01 grams per mole. And that's a mole of carbon dioxide, grams of carbon dioxide. Uh, and if I, I plug this all into my calculator, I can, oh, sorry, I forgot my mole to mole ratio. So my moles of carbon dioxide are going to be that coefficient in front of it. So that's three. And my moles of propane are the coefficient in front. There's nothing, so that means it's one. Uh, and I can check that my, my units all cancel here. So my grams of propane cancel, my moles of propane cancel, my moles of carbon dioxide cancel, and I'm left with grams of carbon dioxide. Cool, so now I just plug that all into my calculator. And I get a value that is 5.9 grams of carbon dioxide. So if my propane is the limiting reactant, I'll make 5.9 grams of carbon dioxide. If oxygen is my limiting reactant, then I'm going to predict how many grams of carbon dioxide I form, and we'll see what that is. If it's larger, then my propane is the limiting reactant. If it's smaller, then my oxygen was the limiting reactant. So similarly, I'm going to go from grams of oxygen into moles of oxygen by converting using the molar mass of oxygen. And I'm calculating these molar masses from the periodic table. After that, I need to convert into uh, moles of carbon dioxide. So I'll have moles of carbon dioxide on the top and moles of oxygen on the bottom. And I'm taking this from my coefficients of five in front of the oxygen and three in front of the carbon dioxide. Now I'm in units of uh, moles of carbon dioxide. At this point, if I had stopped my calculation of the previous one after moles, I could compare the amount of moles of my carbon dioxide from propane and then moles of carbon dioxide produced from oxygen. And the, the smaller number would be my limiting reactant. And then I would just take that one and convert it into mass. But I can also just take them both to mass and compare there. So then I'll convert from uh, moles of CO2 into grams of CO2 using the molar mass. Plugging that all into my calculator, I'll get 1.7 grams of carbon dioxide. And this is what I'm comparing right here. So I have 5.9 grams of carbon dioxide if all the propane reacts. If all the oxygen reacts, I only get 1.7. So because this one is smaller, that means the oxygen is the limiting reactant. And when this reaction is carried out, I'll produce 1.7 grams of carbon dioxide. And I'll still have some propane left over in my reaction mixture, but I won't have any more molecular oxygen left. <laughs>